All right, here we go. I've got, this is some Apple Barrel Country Tan, and this makes a great, makes a really good base color. You can see that it's very taupey. This is going to be interesting. Now we're going to see just how well, and yeah, I'm just going to use the cap. I'm not even going to pour it in a bowl. We're going to see how well does the cork absorb the paint. Well, I know it's a cork, and you know it's a cork, so we can definitely see some holes, but who's to say that's not just where feathers are, right? So this ought to go pretty quickly. To set them so that they can dry. I'm getting kind of a thick amount around the neck so it doesn't look like they're just stuffed on. And like I said, because it's a whimsy item, even if you think it looks a little odd, once we get it all together, you're going to see it's going to look great. I just don't have enough places to set them to dry. Alright, so far so good. I was so excited I couldn't wait and I <laughs> dried them with the heat gun. All right, I know they still don't look like chickens, but just you wait. They are going to look like chickens when we are done with them. And I'm so, I, I feel like a lot of paint really soaked into the cork. I'm going to go ahead and put a second coat on mine. If yours look good, you won't have to, but I just feel like it's a little, this is a little bit porous. And it's just going to do do well, make it a little bit smoother by having the second coat on the cork. So here we go. And yes, they look very drab right now, but that's okay. We're going to decorate them. They're going to be very bright. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat on the rest of them, and I'll be right back with you. All right, it's time to paint. So I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to paint. Not the how to paint, but the how to how to suspend this. I like sitting here and crafting with you. Come on. Saturday craft day. Yeah. Craft day. I'm really excited for this weekend because literally all that I had planned for this weekend was crafting. That sounds nice. Yeah, like I don't. So the trick here is going to be able to put a skewer in it, and now we can paint the bottom. All I have to do is sit here and work on craft. I was going to work on the embroidery commission. That was my big thing for this weekend, and that's going to be tomorrow. Just get that worked on and into a base to dry. All right, step 20, painting the beaks. They just look like seagulls at this point. They really look like seagulls. Well, you could say one and save it and sell it as a seagull. True. I could. I could do a seagull. Seagulls are easy. Yeah. Huh. All right. If you have one of these brushes, it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to do some feathers. And I've got a little bit of black paint here. This one was a Pantone. And I put just a couple drops, like just a little tiny bit of drops of water so it's a little bit more liquidy. And I'm just going to kind of roll this brush over that slightly wetted paint. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to try to think about which way do feathers go on a bird and just kind of roll the brush around like that. So you're just working on making some feather designs, wing designs, and it doesn't have to be super, super precise because as you know, <laughs> chickens' feathers go every which way anyway, right? But these brushes like this are really good for doing little fine things like that. 
where you need it to be kind of a kind of feathery. And I'm just holding it by the beak. And I was just going for the look. I'm thinking that the black and white is going to look good against a Christmas tree. And also thinking about that the red and the yellow and the black are going to be nice contrasts. I don't know if I'm going to do any brown chickens, but now I've got three of these, so I think I probably shouldn't do any more of these. And now as the as I'm winding down on the paint, I'm just going everywhere to kind of fill in so that it all looks feathery. I don't know if there's if you could overdo it. I suppose you could, but I'm just kind of dragging it so it looks like feathers. So there you have it. Some areas have a little bit more than other areas. And I think that's okay because chickens aren't perfect anyway. So this one's supposed to look kind of realistic. I think next let's try and do one that's just like a fun, funky chicken. I pulled out some bright colors and we're going to do some fun colored chickens. I looked online at some pottery examples and found some real cuties. So we're going to branch out and try something completely different. At this time I'm going to use just a little sponge. Get plenty of blue on it. And I'm using a super bright blue. This one is called Dazzling Blue and it's one that I use for guinea hens. And this doesn't even make any sense. Chickens aren't blue. But I want it to be fun. I'm just rolling it a tiny little bit to make sure that it is around. It ends up with one right on the butt. I know, why would a chicken have blue spots? That's a weird chicken. That's a funky chicken. Leave it to dry. My green chicken, the green doesn't look like it got a really good coating, so I'm just going to coat it again with a really fine brush while I think about what other colors I want to do. What is the wildest combination you can come up with? I think that's what's going to end up being the most fun because these are not supposed to look realistic necessarily. So if you come up with your very most fun color combination, it might be really adorable rather than trying to make them look seriously realistic. Sometimes realistic is a little bit too difficult. So, whimsy. Some paints just have better coverage from the beginning and some paints are just a little bit thinner. Of course you pay for what you get. Generally the more expensive the paint the better the quality is. I really like the folk art paints. Uh, I've been using these Apple Barrel and they're they're pretty good too. This one is a Bella which would have come in a pack from either Home Depot or Lowe's and the pack's not very expensive at the holidays. They often have one that's all sparkly colors and then just a plain colors and the price point's really really good but you have to use two coats to get a covering and I think what happened was I just really liked the colors that were in it. And that's why I chose it. Okay, the blue dots are drying, the green one's dying. Um, Alright, I'm looking at some examples up here of ceramic chickens, and one is yellow with red spots. That's kind of an oddity, and the beak's kind of orange. There's also a teal chicken. Let's do teal spots. Cleaned out the sponge real quick. Teal spots on a chicken, that just sounds strange. But it might be really cute. The teal and the lime green. I love those two colors together. And this one is another Bella. So it might take a bit of... Might take a little extra work to make the colors look good. But it kind of pops against the white. You can't go wrong. Worst case, we can just repaint. Now once we get these really shiny, I think they're going to be really cute. 
What do you think? Strange color combination, right? I'm just going to go for some really odd combinations and see what ends up looking cute. I think that once they have all of their um, waddle, once they have all their waddle, I think they're going to be really, really adorable. So I've just got them here and <laughs> This was my water I was drinking, and then it was my brush cleaner, and now it's holding my lollipops of chickens. <laughs> All right, we've got a dozen of these, so what really strange colors should we do next? That yellow with the red dots, I don't know. Or some floral designs, or some little swirls. Maybe I'll paint one that teal color all over. And I have one that the yellow kind of got on it, so this might be a good candidate for just painting it all over. And I'm just going to use the pouncer brush to do that. I'm not even going to dirty another brush. Hmm. Because the pouncer is making little circles, it sort of looks a little bit like feathers. Interesting. Rather than swiping. Because when I swipe it just, when I swipe it's just wiping the paint right off. But when it counts, it's making little round bits. And now, because I'm not doing the circles, I don't have to worry about one being darker than the other because I can just kind of go over it and then redistribute the paint if I end up with one that's really thick. And no brush marks. This might be my new favorite way to apply color. What do you think? It's a teal chicken. It's very strange. But just think how it's going to look when I put some yellow swirls on it. It's going to be dynamite. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a yellow one. I thought that some of these look so much like seagulls that I would end up doing some seagulls. But I, don't, I think I'm going to stick with my chicken idea. Seagulls are just white and gray. They're kind of boring. This is another one of the Bella colors. And I think I picked it up just because the colors were really pleasing. And they just had a great, it was not only a good sale, but I liked the color selection. Wow, after using the sponge, I'm really seeing the lines. And I'm not using really fancy brushes yet. When it comes to the details, that's when you want to pull out a really good brush. But at this point, I'm just using some that have fairly fine bristles so that there aren't a lot of marks. And actually, I don't mind if it shows some brush marks because then it definitely looks handmade and a little bit looks like feathers. While the brighter the colors, the better they are looking together. They're setting each other off. Alright, what next? Should there be an all blue chicken? And if there was an all blue chicken, what color <laughs> what color accents would an all blue chicken have? In case there's some paint left in this, I'm just touching these circles again to try and use up the last of the paint. Because I think I want to use this for the blue. Or I could just paint the blue and just get another brush dirty. This one's a My Color Pantone Dazzling Blue. Oh, don't touch. The green was just a lime green. And the teal is called turquoise. This one's called dazzling blue. I usually use this for the heads on guinea fowl. But this is a worthy use of it as well. I'm looking around for a really soft brush. There we go. I need a good edge so I can just kiss right up to the beak. And I'm glad I'm doing this one in a darker color because the beak kind of overran color a little bit and needed to be touched up anyway. These are going to be the strangest chickens ever. Yeah, you can see that this color does not have a lot of really good coverage. I 
very stringy looking. So we'll do more than one coat. I'm gonna wash my hands, wipe my hands off really carefully before I touch the beak so that I don't have to do any repainting on the beak. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is pouring outside. Perfect day to be inside doing some artwork. And I read a great article yesterday in the Martha Stewart magazine about COVID and lockdown and crafts and how concentrating on crafts lowers your blood pressure, helps keep your um, arthritis at bay by keeping your making you use your hands. There were all sorts of scientific reasons why doing artwork is so good for you. No matter what you choose, whether it's painting or knitting or crocheting, it sounded like anything that keeps your hands busy and keeps your brain kind of occupied is better than sitting around worrying about being ill. And he said that's why there's been such a resurge of people doing all of these re kind of rediscovering things that they like to do like cross stitch or knitting or so have you found yourself bringing out some of your old hobbies that you used to do and re-enjoying them now people are even even looking into leather work just gonna need another coat If you're wondering how I don't ruin uh, my nail polish when I'm doing this, it's because I use gel nail polish and you actually put your hands in a little, it's not a cooker, but it's light that cures it. And so that means no matter what I'm using, it doesn't, it doesn't stain. I just, I just wear a clear polish, but it doesn't stain and the paint just comes right off. So I don't have to worry at all. And my hands stain, but my nails don't. All right, I'll stop. All right, into the container. All right, I'm going to carry on with some other weird colors. I'm deciding how I'm going to incorporate some pink and deciding if I want to put the swirls. This one, the coating is so good. That one, the coating is so good. If I want to put swirls on them, do I want red dots on this one? Uh, I want it to look almost like a bunch of lollipop colors and I think the dots are really kind of fun and playful so maybe I'll mess around some more with some dots and we'll see how it looks so carry on painting all right a couple things I want to mention that could be fun on this is from Deco Art I have this staining and taking medium and what this does is you can take any of your deco art paints and mix with this and make your own stain. So if you're looking for that kind of antique -y look, the kind of brown, I, I've seen most people use it with the brown, you put some brown in with this and then rub it over your piece and kind of rub it off and you end up with that antique -y, like maybe an antique -y Santa. I know sometimes when you do a Santa you don't want to antique it because it's just so perfect already but it, it really makes it look kind of fun. The other thing that I have is from Full Cart and this is called a Crackle Medium and this is something that you paint on over your paint and it makes it all crackly and I was thinking this might be kind of fun on a chicken. I'm thinking about giving this a shot. You base coat the surface, let it dry, apply this medium, let it dry, and then apply the contrasting top coat color. And the top coat must be applied for the cracking to occur. Cracking shows when paint dries. Do not use in humid conditions. It's Florida all year round. Clean up while wet with soap and cool water. And then it's in French and Spanish and a couple other languages. So this might be kind of fun for one of these chickens. And I'm wondering if it would be a crackle yellow chicken or crackle blue. I mean, it would look sort of like when Easter eggs are, when you dye them and then they break and you've got all that crackly color in there. This might be really neat. We've got to try this. All right, here it goes. Maybe I should shake it first, right? All right, this is Folk Art Crackle Medium. So first put on the crackle medium. I'm going to have to choose a really good paint to put over it, aren't I? Because if it's actually going to do the moving and the crackling, it's got to be a coat that's really dark. Because if I remember from using this the last time I used it, it all happens kind of quickly. And as you pull, you're moving 
the medium around. I don't know how this works. It's magic, but I remember it, it leaves some really neat looks, and I think it's just, it could be a really neat look for a chicken. I'll do it, and then you can decide if you like it. Now, the thing is going to be, if there's anywhere that I did not get this medium, it's going to be really apparent because that spot won't crackle. So maybe I better go over it a little bit more just to make sure. Because it's clear, it's harder to see. I think this might this might end up being the thing that you love. You can want this. Okay, so there's one to be crackled. And I suppose I could crackle with this. I could call that the base coat, put the crackle medium over it, and then put yellow on top of it. And that might be really neat. All right, I'm going to do another one. can't help myself. No, no, no. Right now you're just going, please hurry up. <laughs> please hurry up and do the coat so we can see it. But I want to do two so that I get a good comparison. So what's going to show through is the white. So it's going to kind of be the exact opposite of when you crack open an egg. I guess if you wanted to make it look like a hard-boiled egg, a chicken that looks like a hard-boiled egg, what you could do is do that, do your base coat in a color, put the crackle medium over it, and then put white over that, and it would look like when you crack open a hard-boiled egg, and it's got color. This is like dyeing eggs when you don't have enough eggs to do all the things you want. Okay, I have a teal, a green, a blue, and a yellow. Actually, my roosters always have purple on them, so maybe I do want to go with a purple one because it's just such a rich color. Keeping in mind that the undercolor is going to be the color that shines through, I went ahead and I did this one chicken in a black and I'm thinking that that will go well with a purple. Uh, the colors are kind of hard to distinguish here aren't they? But this will be the under color and then whatever color I put over top like say the lime green or the yellow will be the main color and I'm thinking about that the black might end up being the most striking just like those I, I don't know what they're called. They call them stained glass chickens that their every single feather looks like a piece of stained glass. So let's see how this goes. All right, here goes the first one. This one is a white one, and it's got the crackling medium on it. And I think I want kind of a vibrant color, so I'm going to go with the bright blue. And let's see how this goes. It says you kind of don't see the crackling until it dries. So I wonder if that means work quickly. I'm doing lots of pouncing so that it'll sort of look like feathers. And it says we're not going to see until it dries. So let's see. I'm a little bit underwhelmed. I think that I did most of the stippling just using the brush. And the material underneath definitely helped it stipple like that. But it didn't do the big crackling. So I think next we're going to have to try it on the one with black. And see if we get a more vibrant effect. Maybe that's the trick. Here's the black one, and I have not put the crackling medium on it yet because it was still drying. I'm going to make sure it's absolutely dry. Do not use in humid conditions. That's all I can think is that somehow the humid conditions here just are not letting whatever's supposed to happen happen. And I've used this before, and it's really it was really dramatic. So, of course, now I'm wondering why my results are not as dramatic as they were. And it's not because I'm not putting on enough, because I'm definitely generously coating it. I think maybe it's because before I did it on top of black, and it was just a lot more noticeable. And it takes a while to dry. It could just be the humid conditions. It is Florida. It is raining. We've got the air conditioning is on, but it hasn't had to run because it's been pretty low temperatures today. So, we will see. I always hang my heat gun up. That way it doesn't touch anything. Because if it touches you, you'll get a nasty burn. If it touches your table, you'll burn a spot on your table. If it touches your computer monitor, it'll melt it.
think I'm going to save that dramatic one for last. All right, the crackling report. I've got to see if you can see this. You can see a little bit of crackling right there. And I can see a little bit here and there. But it's not very dramatic. And that could be because the top coat was kind of a thin paint. And so I'm going to see what folk art colors I have and try one of theirs. For fun, I'm going to try a folk art tan over white just to see if it will look like a real chicken. It's kind of a dauby tan. And worst case, if any of these we don't like, we can always paint and repaint and paint again. It's definitely a better coverage with this paint. It looks like you could put one coat and it would cover it instead of two or three that the cheaper paints make you end up doing. Okay, very thick coat. It's already, oops, I touched it. It's already starting to crackle. Right, it's already starting to crackle, so I'm going to dry it and see if that finishes up the crackling. This yields a really glorious look. I brushed in the direction that feathers would go, and there's just all sorts of crackling all over. It is wonderful. One thing I will say about this folk art paint is this was a pretty old one, and it's pretty gloppy. And maybe because I put it on so thick and gloppy, maybe that's why it really worked. So now I really want to try with the black one putting the purple on really thick and gloppy and see if I get the same really good results. I'm actually switching to a better brush. This is a Donna Dewberry brush because I want to make sure that this is really good, that I can put it on quickly and nicely. So this is a Bella color and it is called Dynasty and it is really purple. I'm going to put it on fairly thickly. This is going on nicely. Boy, a good brush. Good paint makes all the difference, doesn't it? I'm just trying to put it on really thick. And it's hard to put it on really thick because even though this medium is dry, it's allowing the paint to really slide around, which is why it's going to allow this paint, once it dries, to pull back a little bit and make the crackle look. All right. It's really purple. Let's see how it does once it dries. All right, on that attempt, I got pretty much no crackling, no pullback, nothing. That did not work. Set that aside to dry. Does that mean only full card is going to work? Metallic white. There is the blue with metallic pearl white. And I didn't put it on as thickly as I put on the other color, so I'm thinking maybe this will give it more room. Okay, that did not really crackle. So far, the only one that's crackled is the regular, actual, folk art paint. I'm going to try that next. So I have folk art by Plaid Skin Tone, which is kind of the color of my favorite chicken. I'm trying to put it on a little bit thinner so that a lot of the green can show through. Right, here we go. At this point, I've got all different chickens on sticks and I think the next one I'm going to give a shot at painting is the purple and black one. The first coat of crackle medium didn't do so well so I'm going to try it again and see if the second round does better and try and figure out what did where did I go wrong what could I have done better to make this work or is it just the brand of paint? Right here, guys, this time I dragged it out a little more. That really didn't work. I just have a chicken with two coats of crackle paint on it and no crackle. I'm going to try a different one. This one has crackle paint on it. What color should we go? Green. I did a light coating so that even if the crackle doesn't really work, it might still be effective. So let's see if it slides any. It did. It did some sliding. It wasn't as dramatic as the yellow and blue one, or the blue and green one, but it did do a little bit of sliding. I think once we dress them up, they're going to look cute no matter what. I do have a green one. 
that I could put blue over or I could put the really light green over. I think I'll go with the crazy green. I feel like I'm about to use every brush I own and I feel like I've kind of gone away from what the original idea was going to be to something a lot more fun. So it's it's an experiment today. <laughs> well, sometimes what you do. Yeah, it says don't use this stuff in humidity. <laughs> like, uh, that's all we have <laughs> is humidity. <laughs> all right, back to the black one. <clears throat> I hate to put crackle medium on it a third time. <laughs> Right, I'm going to show you my desk because you're probably going to think I have lost my mind. There's my skewers, my hot tea. I have tried all different kinds of paints, all different kinds of brushes, and I've arrived with my 12 chickens. And I've got the three with the original style like this, and I'm ready to start decorating them. I have put several coats of different colors on them, and so some you can really see the crackling on. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, you can't get too close. Some of them you can really see the crackling on. Some of them you can't see it as much. But I've done a lot of experimenting, and this was a lot of fun. But it's time to put their eyes on and their combs and all the rest. <laughs> 